Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about two unusual new bugs that uh, I discovered with the help of a person by the name of Barnabas, who emailed me earlier, describing one of the bugs that he found completely by accident. We're also going to talk briefly about some of the things that uh, are in Alpha 19, and discuss the idea of title effects in this game. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So right now I'm in a double pulsar system with Taylor and Halsey pulsars and our planet Earth being completely irradiated by them and basically completely empty because of the amount of radiation that is in the system. But that's actually not what, why we're here and this is not what exactly what we're going to be doing, but we are going to be working with pulsars. So Barnabas uh, actually emailed me earlier saying, well listen, I found a really cool bug. If you place Earth somewhere in the middle, and you pick any of the pulsars and you launch it at our planet Earth, something unusual happens to it. So let's actually find out what happens. I'm going to pick uh, just a regular pulsar, like crop pulsar, for example, and launch it directly at our planet Earth. And as, um, as you know, pulsars are very, very small. This is about um, 11 kilometers in radius. So it's actually only about the size of a large city. And you can see that it already irradiates our planet Earth um, in a very interesting color and it's going to start uh, having really interesting effects on it very soon. So right about now, it's going to start um, basically attracting all of this material toward it uh, from both sides, and this is because of the tidal effects that are suddenly um, stretching and squeezing our planet Earth and spaghettifying it, and so you can kind of see a lot of the um, rocks, a lot of the formations start being absorbed by the pulsar, and it starts increasing in size. This is not supposed to be happening, but it's happening anyway. But something even more unusual is about to happen. We're actually going to approach our planet Earth, and you'll see what is going to happen in a few seconds. Um, so obviously, Earth will collide with a pulsar, and as it does, unusually, this is going to be a very cool bug. Or I think it's, I think it's pretty cool. And boom. Earth turns into a very interesting star. And not just a star, but a star that actually has uh, two relativistic jets coming from both sides. And it's about 1.4 masses of Sun in terms of mass. And it's called Earth Nova Remnant, meaning that it's actually an Earth that became a star and then kind of went Nova, I guess. Uh, very, very unusual, very interesting, and very peculiar. So this is a kind of object we were able to create earlier um, using Jupiter, I believe, but not in this way at all. And the fact that this is actually a star now really makes it very interesting. There's also something orbiting around it. I'm not sure what. And what happened to that pulsar is anyone's guess. Uh, if you actually change its radius, or basically if you reset its radius, it's going to become a supernova. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome, right? Huh. Anyway, so... Barnabas, thank you so much for this bug, but it actually gave me some other ideas. I figured, well, listen, if this is happening with pulsars, well, what would happen if I launched a white dwarf at it? Let's find out. It's actually going to be another really interesting bug. So, I'm going to place another planet Earth right here. Uh, decelerate time to something more manageable, like, for example, several seconds per second. And we're going to pick um, the white dwarf that's already here, that's really, really, really famous. It's a white dwarf known as Sirius B. It's about the size of Earth, it's way, 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 way bigger than a pulsar, and it's very close to the size of Earth in general. And basically this is um, a relatively dense object, but not as dense as a neutron star. And we're going to launch it once again at our planet Earth from maybe at this distance right here. And now watch what's going to happen. Let's let go uh, of the timer, and once again, because Earth is a lot less dense, and because this object is a lot more massive, a lot more dense, Earth is going to start experiencing tidal effects, it's going to acquire all of this, uh, or I guess lose all of this mass, in a very awesome, um, interesting way. This is only, uh, this has only been added to Alpha 19, so this is all completely new effects, and I'm really loving them, but notice how the tidal effects here occur from both sides, because Earth is basically, I'm just going to slow this down for a second, Earth is basically being sort of sh stretched this way. It's stretched that way and that way, so um, the force causes the um, all of these fragments to fly away into this direction and also that direction. That's essentially how tidal effects work. Um, and here, this interesting object by Sirius, uh, by the name of Sirius B, 
It's obviously going to collide with Earth, but watch what happens. And I actually, I could not explain exactly why that happens and what exactly is going to be going on right now, but it is definitely a bug. So first of all, Earth turns into some sort of a gas giant, and they kind of just stick to each other. Now this is real, uh, this is real time right now. And so then there's an explosion from the other side. Series B starts growing in size, and look at this. This is really cool. It's like some sort of a interesting creature or something. So there's a very unusual explosion on the other side. Earth just kind of sticks to uh, Sirius and slowly gets absorbed by it. And interestingly, it happens every single time. I don't exactly know why, but look at how cool this is. And then it becomes this. Isn't that awesome? So this is definitely one of the coolest bugs I've seen in the, uh, Alpha 19 so far. It's not really explainable. I don't really know exactly what's going on right now. But uh, Sirius is basically growing in size to a size of a more regular type of um, star. Earth is somewhere inside of it and is kind of stuck. And it's still probably gas giant, actually. I don't know if I can select it or not. I can select these fragments, but not really Earth. Uh, but uh, the actual star, what that used to be a white dwarf, is experiencing these really unusual effects on its surface from the collisions of all of the fragments that came out of Earth. And uh, if you wait long enough, it will actually transform once again. So all of these are clearly bugs, but really, really awesome, very beautiful bugs that I was really happy to discover. And Earth is actually orbiting on the inside. You can kind of see it uh, move around in a circular formation inside of Series B. And I'm going to just accelerate a little bit more until I believe it's going to transform once again. First of all, see how it acquires this really interesting glow on the outside that I've never seen before. This really unusual red glow. And then, just like that, if I wait long enough, it's actually going to... Any second now. Because it happened every single time I did it. No? no maybe not this time? Okay, maybe not this time. And actually, here we go. You just had to wait a little bit longer. It transforms into an Earth star. Because I think Earth actually collides with Series B again. Um, and basically becomes a, a regular, normal size uh, star that's just under the mass of Sun. So if I were to compare this to the actual Sun, uh, it's, uh, it's actually about the same size. Maybe a little bit smaller. So it's a main sequence star. So basically Earth becomes a main sequence star. Very, very unusually. Very, very cool. So that's a pretty awesome bug as well. So basically colliding pulsars and white dwarfs with our planet Earth create some unusual effects. But then I actually wanted to experiment a little bit more, and so I went into the regular system, uh, our solar system, and figured, well, listen, what if I actually start colliding those pulsars with, like, every single object in, um, in our solar system? So let's find out what happens. We're going to pick Crab Pulsar again. And uh, we're going to launch it at, well, let's start by launching it at Earth, actually. Zoom into Earth, and we already know what's going to happen here, so... Uh, we're going to just kind of zoom in really closely and boom! And look at, the, look at this. It's an amazing, incredible, red-looking Earth star that has a really, really cool um, magnetic effect. So, not sure exactly what's going on, but we're going to come back to it in a second. I then decided to do the same to Venus and Mars and other planets and started to discover something really cool. Look at the glow here, it's beautiful. So Venus also becomes a star, but it doesn't have a magnetic effect. Mercury, if you do the same to Mercury, also has the magnetic effects. Yet Mars, if you go to Mars, which is already absolutely gorgeous because of all of these uh, different visual effects from other stars. Uh, Mars also doesn't have the magnetic effects. So then I realized, oh, I know what's happening. Those magnetic effects that we saw on Earth are happening because of one simple reason. So I can, I can tell you right now, Jupiter will also have them. If I collide this with Jupiter, look at this beautiful glow. And boom. See how Jupiter also has them and actually starts spinning around and actually pulsating just like a like a regular pulsar? It is actually because of 
the setting that they have um, prior to me colliding things with them. So if you go in under magnetic field here, uh, all, a lot of these objects already have magnetic fields. So if I remove the magnetic field from here and I collide pulsar with this particular object, you'll notice that it will not have the magnetic field anymore. And so that's essentially what's happening here. So I can basically collide pulsars with every single object and objects that have magnetic field, for example, this one does. Uh, Uranus has magnetic field, so if I collide a pulsar with it, it will acquire magnetic field and become a kind of a pulsar looking thing. And on the other hand, objects that don't have this setting will not acquire it. So nothing is about to become really, really blue and boom, it becomes a star. So that's pretty cool. We just created eight new stars in our solar system and all of them, or at least half of them are actually um, really beautiful pulsars. This is probably the most beautiful one. Not only is it pulsating, but look at these beautiful effects. I don't even know what's happening here, but it just looks really gorgeous. Um, if you were to go into these uh, settings right here and you were to reset the radius, it would actually go supernova. I believe for all of them, all of them will actually go supernova. So you can actually create eight super fast supernova in our solar system by just going in here and resetting the mass. So that's pretty cool. And so those are the bugs I discovered with the help of Barnabas. Thank you so much for emailing me and thank you very much for finding those bugs. Uh, maybe they'll get resolved in the next version of the game or maybe they'll just stay with us because these are actually kind of cool. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep you later, guys. And subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with people that you think might join these videos. And uh, consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. Bye-bye.